Malawi Sundowns is a club located in the capital cities of Pretoria, South Africa. Malawi Town is located in the northern region of the city. On today's video, we're going to be explaining the history of this historic club in South Africa. Malawi Sundowns. I hope that you liked the video and if you like some more of these, subscribe to my channel Golasso. Thank you. Malawi Township was established in 1945. Unfortunately, the British colonial authorities handed South Africa a land of diverse people including the Zulu, Kosa, Afrikaans, Sempedi, Tuswana, and English plus an Indian minority people. They placed them under the rule of a racist Boer Afrikaner section of the government after Britain pulled out in 1948. Apartheid would be put into place and this racist government would survive for the next 45 years. Township would be put into places to racial and ethnically divide the peoples of South Africa to these small and densely populated areas of land. Malawi will become one of the densely populated townships. Through tragedy and struggle, the citizens of Malawi came together to appreciate the beautiful game. Originating in Matra Stad, a group of young men wanted to have a local football club to represent the community. Frank, ABC Motesepe, Roy Fisher, Angli Saya, and Bernard Bertse were credited on the beginnings of the club. The Sundowns would compete in the Federation Professional League, which was a league that allowed the majority African population to play football, and they produced better quality than their rival, the White National Football League. In the FPL, it was mostly Cape Town Spurs that dominated the show, along with light body Santos, so the Sundowns will be in the background trying to compete with the rest. Also a side note, there was another league called the National Professional Soccer League, which was only for black South Africans, which included big clubs like Kaiser Chiefs, Amazulu, and Orlando Pilots, which was dominating the spotlight of the league at the time. These two leagues of the National Professional Soccer League and the Football Professional League would combine and the Malawi Sundowns were immediately in the second tier of South African football. They were struggling so much in the 1980s that the Sundown managers at one point were deciding to dissolve the club. But that was curved by a new owner named Zola Maambe in 1985. Same year, the South African football landscape desegregated with the National Soccer League being established. The Sundowns would do good in this new system, winning the last four games to finish in 11th place. Under Moabe, the Sundowns will fight for supremacy in African football, so they would change their mentality by putting in the, the Brazilian yellow uniform as their main kid, giving them the nickname the Brazilians. Moabe would travel to Soweto to find the coach of Blackpool. Stanley Tasabala and asked if he would like to coach for the Malawi Sundowns team and agree. He would perform well in the Ned Bank Cup or South Africa's FA Cup. They would be in the final where they won 1-0 against Jomo Cosmos. The Sundowns in the late 1980s were invited to the end and a football competition where they would meet crosstown rivals Akurdia Shepherds FC where they won it in 1988 earning one of their first out of eight titles of, in this competition. Even though they won two trophies in 1988 there were problems with the squad as goalkeeper Anderson mentioned that he wanted coach Tabala out of the squad. The coach will end up leaving after winning 54 wins and 25 losses. So thanks Stanley Tesabala for that. The club would be later bought out by the Standard Bank who wanted to take the team from Maambe. But they were ready to go sell off the assets of the club so the Tishala's family prevented them from the team being bought out. The period between 1988 and 1995 was a marked 
Under the leadership of Achilles and Kroik, Malaudi Sundowns focus on building a strong team and implementing a strategic management practices to improve the club's performances. When their efforts culminated when they won their first championship victory, it was a historic moment for Malaudi Sundowns and its supporters. The championship win during this period not only established Malaudi Sundowns as a force to be reckoned with in the South African football scene, but it also laid the foundation for further success in the years to come. Tisha Lies and Kroik's leadership played a crucial role in shaping the club's identity and setting high standards for future achievements. Overall, the period between their leadership in 1988 and 1995 marked a significant milestone in the Malawi Sundowns period as they secured their first championship title. Later, the National Soccer League was going to be replaced by the Premier Soccer League in 1966. And with that, many coaches and players came and went, but there's one particular Igbo striker, Rafael Chikuliu who transferred from Shooting Stars Soccer Club from Iban, Nigeria. When he entered the club, he would be linking up with Emmanuel Amadou, who would become a great attacking force in South African football. Adding to the other members of the squad like Joel Wal Masoala, Alex Apela, Isaac Shai, and Roger Butemba, and the goalkeeper John Tile would create something more like a super team as they won three league titles from 1998 to 2000, adding a Ned Bank Cup in 1998 and a Roth, Roth Men's Cup in 1999. The Malawi Sundowns would enter the African Champions League in 2001 and defeated Angolian club Costa do Sal, Tanzanian club Young Africans and finished seconds behind Tunisian club Esperance Sportive de Tunis in Group A. The Sundowns would battle it out against Petro Atletico winning 5-3 on aggregate to go into the final to face Egyptian club al Hawi. In the first leg of the final, Malawi midfielder Gift Kamada would fire the first goal of the first leg of the final in the 26th minute. However, Saeed Abdel Faiz, the right winger, scored in the 58th minute. The second leg was a complete meltdown of the Malawi Sundowns entire squad as Khalid Bebo, a striker for Ahali, would score all three goals to win Ahali another African Champions League title. This was heartbreaking and also this was also the second time that a South African team even made the final in the first place. Losing the final of the Champions League would decrease the morale of the team as they would finish 10th place in the 2002-2003 season. Next season, Patrick Mosette would buy out 51% of the club and would later actually take full control of the Malawi Sundowns entire foundation and squad. With new owners, Malawi Sundowns will win their first title in six years as they won the league, winning their seventh title. They almost won another title in Ned Bank Cup but lost to Ajax Cape Town. In 2011, a really good former Dutch player who once played in the 1974 final, Johan Neskins, were, was pulled for a position as coach. He woke up the sleeping sundowns after their 2008 Ned Cup win. In the Ned Bank Cup competition in 2012, they've defeated Powerlines FC from Northern Cape Province. 24 mil, which set it a record for the most goals scored against another team in professional South Africa. Unfortunately, well, they would lose the final in Orlando Pirates Stadium to Super Sport United 2-1. As the Malawi Sundowns were pushing closer and closer to relegation, their head coach Nessin Kins was sacked in 2012, and in addition to losing the Telcom knockout final, Pesito Osome would take over as coach and would lead a ninth place finish in his first season. He would have an impressive 2013-2014 season as in one match he destroyed Amazulu 7-1 and would begin an 11 unbeaten streak in the beginning to allow them to win the title that year and qualify for the Champions League. 2014 was also a really good year as they won the Ned Bank Cup and the Telecom knockouts thanks to the attacking forces of Kalena Motubna 
Tau Modose and uh, Tau Wana. This was an uh, event for the other title winning years of 2015, 16, 17, 18, 18, 19, and 1920. Especially in 2015 as they won the league with the most point records with over 70 points. Wanting to return to Africa's biggest club stage since losing the final in 2001 to Ahali, they defeated the Nigerian club Andama International 2-1 with goals from Leonardo Castro and Wayne Anderson in the 42 and 78th minutes. Samlik Soccer Club from Egypt will be their next target, which they will take down in a 3-1 on aggregate. Even though they suffered a 3-1 loss at the end of the group stage day with Edamia International taking the final win, they will pull through and they will then meet Zambian club Zanesco United to score on them 4-1 on aggregate to go to the final. In the 2017 African Champions League final, they would have to reface Zamalek Soccer Club in the first leg which would take place in Lucas Morpry Stadium in Pretoria, South Africa. The Liberian footballer Anthony Laferra would score in the 31st minute. Te Tebego Langerman would later score in the 40th minute. And Asalam Yagal of the other team Zamalek would make a, a lucky own goal in the 46th minute. Meaning, as they head towards Egypt, they would have a three goal lead deficit, which it would be very difficult for Zamalek Football Club to take down. As 70,000 people watch to see if Zamalek would have a comeback, Stanley Awachi from Nigeria will be the only scorer of the match match in the 63rd minute, meaning Zamalek would fail to score two more goals before the 90th whistle, which made it official of Malawi Sundowns Football Club to win their first African Champions League ever. And also, they became the second ever club from South Africa to win this prestigious title since our Orlando Pirates did it in 1995. They would later be invited to participate in the African Super Cup where they would go and meet African Confederations winner TP Zambe, a club from the Congo, in the Louis Ford Stadium, which was spoiler where they would win. In the 2018-2019 season, they would win the treble, which means winning the league the Ned Bank Cup or South Africa's FA Cup for short and the Telecom Knockout as Pitso Mozambi left the club in, in 2019. In 2020, the club was introduced to a top scoring Nibibi named Peter Shaw. As of 2024, he scored 54 goals in 87 appearances, which that's insane. And he became a home favorite for the Yellow Nation supporters. In recent years, they won the, the league in 2020, 2021, 2021, 2022, and 2022, 2023, as well as being Africa's Football League champions in 2023 against Moroccan club Wahad Asi. The future for this club is very bright as it may stand as South Africa's greatest club. If you watch the video until then, I generally want to say thank you. As this is one of my first videos where I actually speak in the mic, so thank you. If you want some more videos like this, I suggest that you subscribe. And this is from Golasso.